This is Sexual Health Unplugged. Dr. Rapol created this amazing presentation that I have the pleasure to give you. She calls it Sexual Health Inside and Out. I call it Sexual Health Unplugged. You're going to hear things tonight that you have never heard before. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Roy with Dr. Studio, and I am so happy to be talking to you about this issue. Sexual dysfunction is a major, major problem. I'm going to jump right into it here. Men with sexual dysfunction are suffering. You should know this. This is a very, very devastating problem, not only for them personally, but for relationships. And in fact, 40% of 40-year-olds actually have sexual dysfunction or erectile dysfunction, 70% of 70-year-olds. So approximately 50 plus percent of men are suffering from this issue. Now you should know that sexual dysfunction comes in lots of different forms. There can be pain with ejaculation, it can be premature ejaculation, there can be all kinds of issues, peronies, which is a curved penis um, from a penile plaque. But erectile dysfunction is defined by being unable to achieve or struggling, not necessarily unable, struggling to achieve an erection and maintaining an erection can also be a problem. So some men will get an erection and they just can't stay. Some will struggle to even get an erection. So there's a whole host of severities here. Sometimes it's a decrease in sensitivity and, and it's difficult to reach a climax. But the Massachusetts male aging study showed us very clearly that 40% of 40-year-olds and 70% of 70-year-olds actually have problems either getting or achieving an erection or both. All right, so it's pretty, pretty devastating. So what causes this problem, it's really multifactorial and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you about it today because there are nerves involved. The nerves that come through the pelvic bowl and innervate not only the sensitivity for the penis, but also the blood flow. The circulation to the penis has to be adequate and it comes through the pelvic bowl as well. The veins have to have integrity because they have to trap the blood in the penis to allow for a, a rigid erection. And there has to be stimulus from the brain. You know, so you can see that there's quite a few things that could possibly go wrong here. There is arousal, stimulus through the brain, that has to travel all the way through the spinal cord, out through the sacrum, through the pelvic bowl, around to the penis, and the very same nerves that innervate your legs that, that uh, uh, you know, can cause sciatica or lower back pain, also innervate your penis and the blood flow to your penis. So it's definitely about blood flow, but there's lots of things that happen that need to really be aligned in order to have proper blood flow. So if you have lower back injuries, or a sacral injury. Maybe you fell on your buttock when you were young and things are jammed up in there. If you have sciatica, again, same nerves. Hip and knee problems and ankle injuries can actually cause that pelvic bowl to be uh, dysfunctional. You can, you can have a little twist and that changes the muscles. We look at thermography here. We'll do a whole body thermography and we can see these areas that are that are lit up are potential areas of problems. After we treat you, we do a follow-up thermography and you can see how it's resolved itself. Not it resolved itself, we help to resolve. So again, trying to tie in for you, back health equals nerve health equals muscle health. Erections and erection quality are just as good as your heart is. Okay, and what that means is you have to have a healthy cardiovascular system in order to have healthy erections. So we need to pay attention to this. We need to take erectile dysfunction seriously. We need to understand that erectile dysfunction is only a symptom of something else happening. We save lives here at Dr. Studio by looking deep into the cause of erectile dysfunction. We have had men come in, men that are in good shape, they look like they're in good health, they have all the right doctors involved, they take good care of themselves, but they have erectile dysfunction. That's a huge symptom and it's a big red flag. We look deep and quite frequently we find 
atherosclerosis or we find cardiovascular disease, we find plaques in the cardio, uh, the, the coronary arteries. Okay, because if there's a decrease in blood flow and it's not a muscle impingement and it's not a nerve problem, it can be plaque in your pelvic bowl that is decreasing the blood flow to the penis. And if there's plaque there, there's typically going to be plaque in the heart. So we look. Plaques in the arteries reduce blood flow in the penis, making an erection difficult. Okay, Mayo, uh, the Mayo Clinic has studied this. Harvard has studied this. In fact, Dr. Michael O'Leary actually says that erections serve as a barometer for overall health. Now, we have known this for a long, long time. Dr. Pohl and I have been practicing this way for a long, long time. And so take erectile dysfunction, that symptom, very, very serious. It doesn't always indicate an underlying heart problem, as I told you. There are other problems, lower back problems. Most men that have erectile dysfunction will even have some lower back problems. And who doesn't have lower back problems, really? I mean, we sit, we drive in cars, our posture isn't always great, maybe we're not wearing the right shoes. We also have to look at the arteries and the veins. You see, this is the cross-section of a penis. The blood flows through the cavernosal nerve, uh, arteries here, fills up all these tiny little arteries inside the cavernosa. You have two cylinders, they're side by side, running through the penis. This is the urethra, where the urine comes out. This is called the neurovascular bundle. So arteries, veins, nerves, there's the nerves. And this is called the tunica, tunica albigenia. This is a fibrous band that surrounds the penis. And so what has to happen, blood flows in. The nerve signal dilates this blood vessel. It dilates, it fills this in. Pressure is created against the tunica and the, the veins are pinched off. So when a man is flaccid, blood is flowing in and blood is flowing out at the same rate. When he is aroused, this vessel here becomes very large. Blood is flowing in at a greater rate than it is flowing out. Pressure is created, which pin presses against this tough fibrous band pinching off the outflow, and now you have a very rigid erection. That whole thing is reversed once there is a climax, ejaculation, or if maybe he loses his uh, focus, or he's distracted, or he's, there's something happens and it creates anxiety, then this vessel constricts, the blood then flows, the pressure releases, blood can flow out, and there you have it. So there's a whole host of events that that have to occur in order for this to be successful. I'm sorry, this is a much better view. So here you see cavernosal vessels, all of these little uh, lacunae or small little capillaries filling to create pressure to pinch off the blood flowing out from here and here and here and here. Okay, sometimes a, a, there's a um, uh, plaque or a fibrosis that occurs in the tunica, in this, this band, this sheath. And so you can't get the stretching to pinch out, pinch off the venous outflow. And you can then have struggle maintaining erections. So we look with a duplex Doppler ultrasound or a duplex ultrasound Doppler rather. So we can actually see all of these structures and we can actually assess how big is this vessel? Is it big enough? Does it seem like it's blocked? Is it not dilating? Maybe it's not dilating because of nerve damage from your back. You don't even realize it. Maybe you're a cyclist and it's not dilating because of pressure on your perineum, on your underneath from the seat. Maybe this is thick. We can actually tell that. We can tell if there's blood flowing out when there shouldn't be. We can assess that, whether it's venous leakage or an arterial problem. Or maybe it's these small little vessels because you have untreated um, high blood pressure, or maybe you even have treated high blood pressure, but it's affecting this, or insulin resistance or diabetes, and you don't even know it. Or maybe you have a calcium buildup in here because you actually have inflammation and, be, and you have high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, and it's treated by medication, but the problem, the underlying problem isn't gone. So you can see by looking deep into this structure and at the pelvic bowl, there's so much we can learn about why this is happening 
and it's so important. This is an arteriogram. This is showing that big vessel coming in through the pelvic bowl, innervating the prostate, coming down here and innervating the penis. So if any of this stuff is impinged, you're going to have a problem for sure. For sure. And this is fun stuff. And you know, the brain rules. It all starts in the brain. So we have to look at neurotransmitters. Now, neurotransmitters aren't easy or easy to test. So there's no great test for neurotransmitters. I wish there was. But what's really nice is we have these comprehensive questionnaires. These things have been validated and tested. And when you answer certain questions a certain way, we can actually determine what's out of balance. Maybe you're low in dopamine. Maybe your serotonin is low. Maybe your norepinephrine or your epinephrine. Maybe your GABA overloaded. Or maybe you don't have enough GABA. And so you're anxious or you, you teeter on that threshold of anxiety. And maybe that affects your performance. Maybe even affects your life performance because erectile dysfunction actually affects every aspect of your life. This is not just a physical thing. This is a mental thing. This is a relationship thing. Okay? This is a health thing. Mind, body, spirit. Hormones play a major role. Now, you may be low in testosterone to get that fixed. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to completely solve your erectile dysfunction. Sometimes it does because that's all it is. But we need to look at the whole picture of penile health. We need to look at blood flow, not only the artery in and the venous out. We need to look at neurotransmitters and hormones. This is actually called the neuroendocrine system, the neuroendocrine system. We need to look at back health and muscular health and how it relates to the nerves and the blood flow and how hormones affect the blood flow. Did you know that you actually have testosterone receptors inside the blood vessels of your penis? So guys, if your hormones aren't optimal, then you're not going to have the appropriate dilation of blood flow. If your estrogen is too high, you're not going to have the right testosterone to estrogen ratio. If you don't have enough DHEA or pregnenolone, you're going to struggle. All right, there's a lot to this. If you have prostate issues, then you have pelvic bowl issues. You have blood flow issues. You have nerve issues. You may be on your way to developing prostate cancer. And it's not hard to fix these problems. I, that's, that's the, that's the take-home message, okay? It's not hard to fix these problems. We have physical therapy. I know that, that exercise is really important to all of us. We have tools like PRP and ozone and stem cell recruiting factors and biologic allografts and shockwave. Now, the way we use these tools are very different from the way most practitioners use these tools. And unfortunately, it's because they don't really understand erectile dysfunction. They don't understand the cause. They don't have the experience that Dr. Rapol and I have. Dr. Rapol is a urologist, a urologic oncologist, an acupuncturist, an herbalist, a functionally minded physician. She is an integrative urologist and there's no one else like her. I am a functional physician. I am an osteopath. I understand this structure. I've been using and teaching doctors to use Play the Rich Plasma for almost 10 years. Dr. Rapola has been using ozone for 20 years. You're not going to find practitioners like this. But these tools are amazing. We inject the ilio in inguinal area, okay, which is the iliolumbar ligament, the whole sacral complex here. All right, this whole area. We will inject it with ozone and plate the rich plasma when it's necessary. Again, we need to release these structures. We need to address the pelvic bowl. If you have one of these structures, this iliolumbar ligament is always a problem when there's low back pain. Even if it only affects you occasionally, it's there. This is a problem. When this is tight, then this doesn't move. The ilia doesn't move on the sacrum. It affects the hip. It affects the muscles that are attached to these bones. It affects those muscles. You'll tighten one side. One side will be lax. The tightened area will impinge on a nerve or blood flow. You see where I'm going with this? Not hard to fix. Just have to know how. This shockwave is the most brilliant device. It's my favorite tool so far. You know, I fall in love 
then I find another amazing tool. These acoustic waves can also release that pelvic bowl structure. We use this to stimulate the regeneration of nerve tissue to actually create new blood vessels to shake out any calcium that might be in the blood vessels in the penis, to relax muscles in the pelvic bowl. I mean, this, that, that tool is just amazing. Again, neurotransmitters, hormones, blood flow, all important, not only systemic blood flow, like your heart, but also the local aspect to your penis. Sometimes it's just a, a blood flow issue at the penis itself. Okay, sometimes it's impinged because of the pelvic bowl and your heart's not affected at all. Sometimes it is cardiovascular disease and it starts way up here and it affects that whole area. You have to get evaluated. All right, we have to understand this. We can apply all of these tools. When they're applied properly, it's amazing. So we have to talk about... Uh, actually, I want to go back here real quick. We have to talk real quick about penile dysmorphia. What that means is if a man is is a bit concerned or even freaked out, it, it, it runs the whole gamut about the size of his penis. Sometimes it's the width, the girth. Sometimes it's the length. This is a real problem. Men don't understand what a normal size penis is, and quite often it's because they were teased as a kid or they've been watching porn, and the guys in pornography are not normal size, all right? That's, that's, that's why they're in pornography. They have a job. It's because of the size of their penis, okay? So they're not normal size. Most men don't understand that, and it's very important that we talk about this, this issue, and it's very important that women understand how important it is to be supportive of your man, regardless of the size of his penis, and to understand that he's likely normal. And if you're watching pornography, or you've had a, a, an abnormally large partner in the past, it's not fair to talk about this with with a guy who is a normal size okay but this is a big deal dysmorphia this affects self-esteem i have met men that just shy away from any intimate relationship because they're so worried and and focused on the size of their penis and yet when i examine them they are normal or even sometimes larger than normal but this has been planted in their brain now the fact is Avoiding sex, avoiding an erection actually can lead to atrophy because it, the penis is like a muscle and if you don't use it, you lose it and it becomes fibrotic. Guys that have had prostate cancer that are having a lot of erectile dysfunction or, or just don't get any erection at all, we can help you most of the time. But not having an erection is going to lead to more difficulty in regenerating and reversing this problem because the penis will actually fibrose. And patients can lose, men can lose from a half a centimeter up to five centimeters every 14 months after they stop using their penis, after they stop having erections. So not a whole lot about that, but, you know, let's be kind to each other. Let's talk about this. If you suffer from dysmorphia, come on in. We care about you. There are ways that you can do penile enhancement as well. I don't want to talk a whole lot about that, but I want you to know that that can be done safely. But we have to talk about it, okay? So let's move on to just telling you a little bit about some of this penile enhancement. Because some of you have lost some girth because your peanut, your erections have not been as robust. And so there's a few things that we do here that can help that immensely. Injection of platelet-rich plasma into the penis can stimulate the new, new blood vessels, more sensitivity, so you have a more firm erection. We sometimes add scaffolding uh, like um, uh, stem cell recruiting factors. We have a procedure here we call studio girth, which is we use some scaffolding, we use platelet-rich plasma, we use hyaluronic acid or fillers to actually change the girth. There's some components of that that will change the girth long term. There are some that give an immediate result. 
We use Shockwave also to remove some of this fibrosis and to improve the elasticity of the penis and the blood flow to the penis. We're going to apply that Shockwave to the sacrum and the lower back if in fact you have some problems there. We're going to optimize your hormones. All of these things will lead to enhancement of your penis. Okay? And it's so important to self-esteem and to relationship. You guys have a lot of responsibility. You got to show up for your family and for your work and for your, your, your friends. And it's not easy and we're here to help you. A lot of men suffer from incontinence and pain. I've seen men with, with severe pelvic pain. Sometimes it's due to, to a large prostate. Sometimes it's prostatitis and you're taking antibiotic after antibiotic and nothing works. We are expert at this. Sometimes it's pain with ejaculation or testicular pain. We can help you with that too, believe it. Pain is the bane of a urologist's existence because they don't have a lot to offer you. We have figured this out, all right? And let's talk about women for a bit. Women suffer from the same things, you know? Let me pull this slide back up. Women suffer from incontinence. 43% of women suffer from leaking urine. We think of this as an old woman disease. It's not. It happens to young women, women who haven't even had uh, children, haven't birthed children vaginally. Certainly when you have a vaginal delivery, that's going to increase your incidence of incontinence. And then as we get older and there's hormonal changes, there can be this incontinence. You can have a frequency or an urgency. You can jump rope or cough and sneeze. So there's lots of different types and we need to determine what that is. And again, pain. Women will have pain. There are young women that have pain with intercourse and it's not related to hormone decline. Older women or women who have gone through hysterectomies or have, have through uh, are perimenopausal or postmenopausal will often have problems with pain, hormone balance, difficulty orgasming. We can help you with this. Women suffer from incontinence at a, an alarming rate, an alarming rate, okay? I think it's underreported even. Women suffer from hormone imbalances. Even when they're young women and they are menstruating, there can be hormone imbalances. If there's any premenstrual syndrome, headaches, cramping, heavy menses, these are hormone imbalances, girls. These are hormone imbalances. We can help you with that, all right? It has to be done properly. You can see that a menstruating woman has an unbelievable cycle. This is the estrogen this is from day one to day 28. This happens, this adventure happens every single month. Estrogen increases until there's an LH surge and you ovulate. Estrogen then decreases, bumps again just before menses. Progesterone's a little bit low at that first part of the cycle. As soon as you ovulate, it goes up. If you don't have enough of this, you're miserable. All right, and there's even testosterone throughout the whole thing. If you don't have enough testosterone, you may not ovulate. You may not feel well. All right, so get evaluated. And certainly, as we get older and we go through the changes that lead to, men to menopause, it can be crazy. It can be crazy. Not all women experience symptoms of menopause, but in fact, there are 12 types of menopause. And it's not hard to figure those things out. If the adrenal gland is not healthy, then you're going to suffer menopausal symptoms. All right, we need DHEA, which comes from the adrenal gland. We need preg pregnenolone, which comes from the adrenal gland. We replace them, we test them. We make sure we understand what you need before we treat you. We can apply the same technologies to women for their pain and female sexual dysfunction and incontinence. We can, maybe it's just vaginal dryness that's leading to discomfort. Maybe you're not sensitive anymore. Maybe you have pain. Maybe you've, you're peeing all the time, okay? We can fix those things. We, we prepare you appropriately by, by uh, making sure that you have the, the potential to regenerate and to repair. And then we use PRP, we use ozone, stem cell recruiting factors, shock wave, biologic allografts, all kinds of different things, hormones. Again, that's my shock wave. This is the pelvic bowl of a woman. This is the side view. So this is her, one of her ilia. This is that sacrum coming down. These are the muscles of the pelvic bowl. You can imagine if some of these are tight, you're going to have some incontinence. You're going to have some pain. You're going to have some lack of sensitivity if some of these are loose or if the vaginal canal is not uh, 
that the, uh, the skin inside there, the lining of the vaginal canal maybe is thin because of menopause and that's often hormone related. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we need to do PRP. The O-shot can really help unbind a woman from those chains. Every woman can benefit from platelet-rich plasma and shockwave and a hormone evaluation. Every family deserves to have the intimacy that comes along with healthy sexual function and a healthy, painless sex and a restored confidence and pleasure. These procedures are painless. They're effective. They are for everyone. And it really depends on your state of well-being, where you are in your cycle of life and what's going on. We have the tools and the technology to fix these things if you're ready to really live again. I hope that you are. It has truly been my pleasure to present this to you. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your time and your effort and your interest in this. This is a passion of mine. Dr. Rapole is amazing. There's no one like her on the planet. And with the team, the studio team, we are absolutely positive that you're gonna have a wonderful experience from start to finish. So again, thank you so much and be well.